Hello everyone, Kotongwane, the Native God here. Right, um, we are going to have a look at a problem on reduction gear boxes, um, worm and worm wheels, and see how you would approach problems based on um, worm and worm wheels. Right. Now, looking at the statement, um, this is what we've been given. Right, so you can pause the video, um, just go through the statement, so you can see what it is that you've been given um i've already taken down the information that you've been provided in the statement right so in the statement you are given the number of starts so n stands for number of starts right and then we are also given the mean diameter of the worm right i denoted as d sub w right for diameter of the worm essentially which is 80 millimeters and then we have the pitch we've also we also have been given the pitch right the pitch here is 15 millimeters um we've been given the rotational frequency of the worm it is 1680 reps per minute right we are also given the diameter right we are given the diameter um of the collar right now when you've been given the num the diameter of the collar um, it suggests that we are going to calculate um, what is this frictional torque, right? Because um, this radius, right? The radius of the collar we only essentially use in calculating the frictional torque, right? So given the diameter, you then divide that by two, of course, to get the radius, right? Um, we are also given the output power, right? Which is 28.5 kilowatts and the coefficient of friction which is 0 0.045 right now questions calculate the following 5.1 calculate the efficiency of the worm right they want us to calculate the efficiency of the worm now there's a number of ways that you can calculate the efficiency right so how you calculate it will be based on um, what exactly you've been given right so based on what you've been given here in calculating the efficiency right so 5.1 right calculating the efficiency we essentially are going to use this formula right efficiency of the worm which will be equal to tan theta divided by tan theta plus beta right now theta is the angle is the lead angle right and then beta is the angle of friction right so in order to be able to right so times 100 of course right so in order to be able to get the efficiency we need to calculate theta and we need to calculate beta right and based on what you've been given we'll be able to calculate both of these angles hence we'll be able to substitute here and get the efficiency of the work right so first calculating theta we then use this formula tan theta is equal to the pitch times the number of starts divided by pi times the mean diameter of the worm right and then of course solving for theta here we will calculate the actan of um, the pitch, the pitch is 15 millimeters, number of starts is 2, divided by pi times the diameter, which is 80 millimeters, right? And then if you punch this in your calculators, we are going to get 6,807 degrees, right? Six oh, I mean, 6,807 degrees, right? You get your data. Right, we've been given the coefficient of friction, so we are able to get the angle of friction. Remember, the angle of friction we get by using this tan angle of friction is equal to the coefficient of friction. Right, so to get beta, beta will be equal to the arc tan of uh, the coefficient of friction, coefficient of friction being 0 0.045. Right, so you, if you punch this in your calculators, we are going to get two, right, two comma five seven seven degrees. 
right now that we have both these angles now we can get the efficiency of the worm all right efficiency of the worm is equal to tan theta theta is 6,807 right divided by tan theta which is 6,807 plus beta which is 2,577 right right and then of course you multiply this by 100 then if we punch this in our calculators we are going to get 72,229 percent right that is how we would calculate the efficiency of the worm in this case all right now looking at 5.2 5.2 is calculate the power transmitted by the worm all right again there's a few ways that you can calculate the power being transmitted by the worm all right but the most convenient one would be through using the efficiency all right also bearing in mind that we are given the output power all right so the efficiency of the worm is also equal to the output power divided by uh, the power being transmitted by the worm all right and then solving for the power of the worm here this will be equal to the output power divided by the efficiency of the worm all right and of course this will be equal to the output power is 28,5 kilowatts so this is 28,5 right 28,5 kilowatts we want to leave it as kilowatts so the answer we get will be in terms of kilowatts All right and then the efficiency we just calculated it is 72 comma so essentially this would be 0 comma 7 2 2 right and then if you punch that in your calculators we are going to get 39 comma 4 7 4 and then this is in kilowatts right pretty straightforward stuff right then 5.3 5.3 the end thrust on the worm wheel right so now we get essentially because of because of how the worm and worm gear mesh right they do not necessarily have um, the same um, what is this tangential force or the same um, end thrust force right um, yes let, let, me, let me call it that rather right um, or let me just stick to tangential force because that's the term uh, most students are familiar with right so the tangential force acting on the um, on the worm gear is different from that acting on the uh, uh, on the on the worm right so when they say calculate the end thrust on the worm wheel right they essentially asking us to calculate the tangential force right on the what the tangential force acting on the worm right um they could ask you to calculate the end thrust the end thrust on the um, what is this on the gear wheel as well right so when they say end thrust on the worm essentially they are looking for this here right essentially this is what they are looking for and then if they say calculate the end thrust right on the on the gear wheel or on the worm gear essentially they are looking for this here right so that is how i differentiate between the two right so this is the a tangential force on the worm and this is the tangential force on the gear wheel or on the worm gear right but right now they're asking us to calculate the end thrust on the worm so they're looking for um, the tangential force on the worm right so ftw 
right this stands for tangential force on the worm all right now how do you calculate this um based on what we've been given right we'll be able to calculate it using the output power right now the the end thrust on the worm essentially um comes from the torque um from the output shaft right that is why when having to calculate the tangential force on the worm on the or the end thrust on the worm right we simply use quantities of the output shaft because that is where essentially the um, uh, the end thrust is coming from right it is coming from the torque from the output shaft right so this would essentially be equal to output power is equal to so we express this in terms of force and uh, what is this force and velocity right so this times the v right now remember the v when you have um, two gears in mesh right the velocity on in, in each gear is is equal right so it won't it doesn't necessarily matter how or which quantities we use to calculate um, the velocity it can be either one of the worm or of the worm wheel right or worm gear or gear wheel right so it doesn't necessarily matter now based on what we've been given we do have this this is what you're looking for right and then this we can calculate using either the quantities of the worm or the quantities of the worm wheel right now velocity right v for the worm or how we calculate the velocity for the worm is um this would be what is this pi times um pi times and then as far as the worm right as far as the worm remember we don't we do not necessarily use what is this we did not necessarily use the pcd but in general the velocity would be pi times pcd times the rotational frequency right so this is of the worm and that is of the worm right now the pcd right how we calculate the pcd um is by using the module times number of teeth right so this will be the module times the number of teeth now for the worm the worm doesn't necessarily have number of teeth but we instead use number of starts so times n right times the rotational frequency of the worm right now as you know pi times module right pi times module is the pitch so we can replace pi times module by using the pitch times the number of starts times the rotational frequency of the worm right now the rotational frequency is expressed in terms of arrived per minute so we would have to divide when substituting we would have to divide this here right we'd have to divide this by 60. all right so this is equal to the pitch is the pitch is 15 uh, where is this yes the pitch is 15 millimeters so this would be 15 but now remember the velocity has to be in meters per second so we convert this to meters right times n n is 2 that's the number of starts times the rotational frequency all right so rotational frequency is 1680 yes 1680 so this will be uh, 1680 right and then of course divide this by 60 all right now let's see what we get so you have 15 you have 15 times 10 to a negative 3 times 2 times 1680 over 60 and we get 0 0.84 all right so this is 0 0.84 meters per second all right so now we can substitute this here right uh, make the tangential 
exponential force of the worm, um, the subject of the formula. All right, so here you would then have FTW is equal to this divided by the velocity. All right, so this would be equal to this is 28,5 kilowatts, so, so times a thousand divided by the 0 0.84. All right. No, this here, the 28,5 times 10 to the 3 divided by 0 0.84. So I am getting 33. Right, so this is 33,929 kilo newtons. All right, and that's how you calculate this. Right, so that is how you would calculate the interest on the worm. All right, that's 5.3. So now let's look at 5.4. Right, the frictional torque on the collar. Right, as suggested or as mentioned earlier, that if you've been given the diameter of the collar, that suggests that you're going to calculate the frictional torque. Right, because it is um, the radius. Right, the radius of the collar we only get to use really when calculating the frictional torque. All right, so 5.4. 5.4 to calculate the frictional torque. This is equal to mu times the interest on the worm. Right, so for this formula in particular, we only use the interest on the worm here. Never the interest on the gear wheel right times uh the radius of the collar right now we have all of these quantities right this is 0 0.045 times ft which you've just calculated which is 33.929 right kilo so times a thousand times the radius of the collar which is so I worked it out here, 0 0.0375. So this is 0 0.0375, All right? And then if you punch this in your calculators, we are going to get 57. All right, 57.255 Newton meters, All right? And that is how you would attempt such a question. All right. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, please like the video. And um, watch out for more videos to be posted on Mechano Techniques N6. All right. All right. Cheers.